All right, joining me right now, uh, guys from The Offspring, Dexter Noodles. Thanks so much for having uh, some time or giving us a little bit of time today. Of course, yeah, stoked Hello, to be here. Oh, yeah. So congratulations. Um, the, 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 quick, the quick story about getting your new song on the air, and I, I'm going to take full credit for this right now, my program director. I was blown him up because I knew you guys had some new stuff coming out. And I sent it to him. And I didn't hear anything. And he's busy. I, you, these guys are wearing 10 hats. And, you know, I'm just the dopey morning guy. So he, he gets it the day after it comes out. I don't hear from him until Monday. It came out on Friday. And he's like, well, what do you, what do you think? I go, this is really good, okay? I, can, I can't die on the hill for every band that, you know, my favorite bands. I can't. But when I hear something, he will listen to me at least. And he said, what do you want to do? I said, let's play it. Let's play it and let's let the listeners hear it. And then let's play it the next day. So we've played it all week. Dude, guys. People are loving the song. It's, and it's not, a, yeah. it's, it, it, there's no guarantee. Everyone knows the heritage. Everybody knows the offspring. Everybody loves the catalog, but you know that there's no guarantee that radio is just going to be sitting there waiting for you with open arms. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for going to bat uh, with the PD for yes. us. We appreciate that. We give you full credit, of course, <laughs> for yes. <our> success. <laughs> yes. Um, but but you're exactly right. You know, we, we have we've worked really hard on this record. We have something that we think is just fantastic. And, you know, we're super stoked with what we got. But it doesn't mean anything until the fans have heard it and and they finally weigh in thumbs up or thumbs down. Right. So it's ex it's an exciting but also kind of a nerve wracking time because you never know how it's going to be received. And you really, really want to connect with your audience. And I, yeah, I think because of this pandemic and we'll get into all of that. I think there's going to be like a baby boom, like a music boom. I, I hope that all these bands are out there recording. And then when we get the green light, boom, we're going to get music and then go back out on tour and do all of this. But if, if I'm like reading into your social media, I feel like you've been teasing this since 2017. This doesn't, <laughs> this, this, <laughs> am I right on that? Like, have you been sitting on this for a long time? A long tail. I think like around 1997, I started talking about this record <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. the fans, the fans don't believe anything I have to say anymore. It's been, yeah. Yeah. At least in terms of dates, they don't believe me. It's been a little while. We always thought we could finish it in the next year, but it always just kept on taking a little longer. Yeah. How much downtime did you allow yourselves in this? It's been about a year. Here we are. We're talking about we're in a weird time that we're talking it's like one year since the world shut down and did you give yourselves some time to take a break and allow hey let's just take care of me let's process what's going on with the world let's sit around let's just hang with our families did you give yourself some time or did you kind of stay working offspringy recording and writing during this time well, we just got smashed for about a month yeah. first. And then uh, <laughs> I, I, I give myself that kind of time on a regular basis. <laughs> now, but Dexter, Dexter's one of these guys, uh, like he's got his hot sauce. He's got his, his flying. Um, he's, like, he went back to school and got his PhD. Stop, you know, please he's, stop. Uh, Come on. He, he's Enough. got, yeah. He's yeah. always got something going I've on. Got something know, he, going can't, on. he can't sit still. I think that we, we used the time really to go back to the record. We were pretty much had it. We had it in the can and we thought, well, let's just go back to it and take a kind of a fresh look one more time. And we really did bring the songs up a notch. So I'm glad in retrospect that we had the time. You're talking about when the pandemic. First when the pandemic, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 And we thought maybe, well, we'll just sit on this and wait it out. But here we are a year later. And it's yeah. like, you know what? Let's just let's put it out and just see what happens. Do you think that bands are sitting on music right now because it's important right now to go out and play live? I, I'm sorry. In the in the times that we live in before this crazy pandemic. Right. If, if you wanted to sell your music, you can't rely on radio. You've got other outlets now with social media, but still like playing live and getting in front of people, that's going to be the best way to, and even make money for bands these days. So do you think that there's a ton of bands sitting on stuff and waiting to put it out so that it will coincide with them going out live? Because you're obviously coming out early with your album. Oh, for sure. People are sitting on yeah. it. Yeah. But also sell music. I think you sell packaging now. <laughs> right music's true. free on the internet people want to yeah. yeah and they want to so you gotta bundle their records with their touring gigs yeah. and all that. I, I get all that and yeah and i mean look i would rather be able to tour when our record comes out it was just a matter of you know how long do we really want to wait 
and uh, we're a band and we put out music. Yeah. We think that maybe the bands know more than us. Um, I know you don't work for the CDC, but do you see in 2021 Offspring playing a show with 100% capacity, whatever size building that is? Oh man, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, know it's a tough question. The, yeah, because the, the really the the virus is in control of that, you know. And until we get the virus to where it stops spreading in, enough, so that people are safe in large groups, um, we can't do that. Um, but as soon as that is possible, as soon as whether it's you know vaccination or you know just normal herd immunity, we get the 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 virus under control we're down we're gonna you know as soon as we can get people together gathered safely we're there this has got to be i know it's been nine years since you guys have put out an album but i don't remember a time where you guys being off the road this long is this safe to say this is the longest since you i mean because you guys have been around since you were teenagers 80s so is this the longest you've been without playing live for sure. Yeah, for sure. We're normally on the road almost four months out of the year. So we do mm -hmm. uh, we do a lot of touring and, and you know, we, we love going around and playing all the shows. So it has been a little strange to be home this long. Uh, Let the bad times roll is the name of the album. It's out April 16th. If I could nerd out just a little bit, you're going with Bob Rock as your producer. And the only reason why I would bring this up to you, because I do think you're kind of average music fan off the street would know who Bob Rock is, even if it's just for Metallica's Black Album, and, and he was the bass player on that. Um, but he's done so much. This is your third time working with him. So you could have anybody you want. You go with Bob Rock. What does he bring to the Offspring sound? Oh, so much. Um, well, first of all, guitar-wise, I mean, we, we have a certain kind of, you know, where we like to start with for guitar sound. But he always adds things. He's always and he's always adding new stuff. He he's uh, whether it's a new amp or a new old amp or a new box. He's always coming in with new toys, new guitars, new new uh, effects. Um, I like when we get stuck. How he says, "Well, what would the offspring do?" Like he doesn't try yeah. to put his own spin on it. He tries to get us to to expand ourselves. And when when we're getting somewhere, but we're not quite there yet, he always says, "It's gonna be great." <laughs> yeah. yeah so you, be great. you know okay we're 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 heading in the right direction but we're, we're not, not there, there yet. yet so you got to keep working on it but you guys have been doing this long enough where each one each one of you your your producers your engineers you know all this stuff do you do you disagree with bob on things does he win arguments does he let you win sometimes how does it work? You know he's been in drag outs with Metallica. He's done Bon Jovi. He's probably been yelled at and yelled to Motley Crue, Aerosmith. <laughs> what do you, do you let him do you let him lead or is it kind of an equal playing field? We've heard the stories for yeah. sure, but <laughs> no, he always tells us he goes, "Look, I can't make the offspring do what I want them to do any more than I could ever make Metallica do what I wanted them to do. He goes, it's your band. He goes, I, I'm here to listen, to be that extra set of ears and eyes on your stuff and to suggest if I think something could work better, but ultimately it's your band. And that's why we like working with us so yeah. much. And, and, you know, the, there are times when there are disagreements. Um, you know, sometimes we win the argument. Sometimes he convinces us to try something that we normally wouldn't have. Um, and it ends up being being great. Ultimately, when we all get together and we have it, you know, a finished product, we're, we're all really happy and on board with it. Uh, yeah. You know, there's never been, uh, you know, any time when the finished product has ever been in, in anyone's question. One of the things that you guys did uh, during the break, uh, and it was early, and I thought the timing of it was brilliant. You put out a cover of Here Kitty Kitty uh, right after the uh, the Tiger King documentary that everybody, you, I mean, talk about timing. That thing came out right. right when everybody was on lockdown. So I'm assuming you guys watched it as well. But doing that cover, uh, was that something that you can do in a home studio? Because I thought, I mean, I really, really liked it. I just got to check myself because I'm such a big fan of you guys. I'm thinking this, maybe this could be played on the radio. And we, we, we toyed around with it in the morning and people really, really liked it. Um, was that a home recording situation? Well, we did it here in this home studio, but Pete was in Nashville. So we sent him the track. He did all the, he, all the drums there in Nashville. And so that's the first thing we've ever done really remotely like that. 
It was good though, man. I really liked it. And I, I'm assuming you both did watch Tiger King. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's crazy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, couldn't, couldn't believe it. Every episode you're like, wait, worse. <laughs> what? 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 Like your jaw just kept dropping. Yeah. Oh man. And you guys put out a Christmas song too. Darlene Love, right? We did. Yeah. We Christmas covered baby please, uh, baby, please don't come or please don't come home. Baby, <laughs> please, please come home. <laughs> it felt like the world needed a, a nice Christmas song right yeah. then. I am. I'm such a fan of you guys and your covers. I, I really am. Uh, and I did have one last little Bob Rock nerdiness just because he was in the payolas. I really think the offspring doing their own take of you've got the eyes of a stranger. I'm going to throw it out there. I think you guys would kill that song. And that's we, Bob we Rock. played that with we played that with Bob one time at a, at a uh, on. festival at or a like a benefit in uh, in Maui. Yeah, yeah, we played that with with him oh, and, and Alice Cooper's band was the backing band. Yeah, for this benefit. We oh did. my! Yeah. And Alice Cooper always gets the best musicians. So yeah, it was yeah. great. Oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure to invite you next time. Oh my God! I can't believe I missed a cover of that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one more thing on covers. Let's talk about Five Finger Death Punch. Um, they did a cover of "Gone Away," and you want to talk about reworking a song. The song is already, it was a huge hit for you guys. And Five Finger Death Punch, Punch went in and they put a spin on it. They made this phenomenal video. It's so <clears throat> emotional. They really did their own interpretation of it. Uh, I guess, number one, when it comes to a cover song, do they have to approach you? Do they ask you if they can do it? Did they go out and do it and just send you a copy of what they did and, and look for approval? Is it, is it you, know, you know, do it and you know, beg for forgiveness and not ask for permission? <laughs> now, legally, you don't have to ask. You can cover whatever you want as long as you cover the actual song and don't like adapt it. But, um, but no, I, I, I never felt like I wanted permission. I was, I was flattered that they wanted to do it, and I thought they did a great job. It was really cool. Is it weird seeing your baby altered? Very. <laughs> I mean, it, it's so yeah, so right. different. Yeah, yeah. It, can Very. can you even listen to it where? you would say, okay, that's all right, but maybe I would have done this, this, or this. I mean, is it is it a difficult listen for you to not want to maybe tweak it the way that you would hear it differently? <laughs> I wouldn't say difficult. It's just a trip to hear it done in such a different way that I would have never thought of. And it makes it really interesting. That, that guitar solo is note for note what I had originally written for the song. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Other than that, you know, very, very, uh, very different uh, interpretation of it. So with us not getting an album for such a long time, I start looking at years. I start looking at, you know, how long I've been a fan and how long you guys have been around. And you can just roll your eyes and say, shut up. But Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, does that ever get brought up? Is it a weird thing to even talk about if, if I say, hey, the eligibility is there? Um, have you guys ever just over a beer said, hmm, I wonder if they're ever going to call? Not really. It's not nothing we've ever really discussed. Um, when we're in Cleveland, we talk about maybe going. <laughs> you know, we'd love um, to go to the museum. Yeah, yeah. it's you know we we've, we've been there. It's it's a neat place. Um, and I you know I like seeing you know bands that I I'm a fan of get in there. You know I love to see the Cars get in. Uh, the Ramones got in. There's so many um, great bands that aren't in. That I feel like they yeah. should, they would be in front. In front of the line. For sure. Us. I know right everyone's talking about Linda Ronstadt. And I didn't realize Tina Turner wasn't in. She's probably in with Ike and Tina Turner, but she is, I'm yes. Yeah, but I'm yeah. surprised she she as her as you know, just as her as a um, solo performer isn't in yet. But it's it's kind of fun to see that it is becoming our because it's you know, we're pals. So it's our rock and roll hall of fame. It used to be, you know, Springsteen and Dylany and Creedence Clearwater Revival. Now it's you know, right. Foo Fighters going in and Nirvana is already in, and, you know, talks of Soundgarden and Nine Inch Nails. It's our rock and roll hall of fame now. And I'm just I'm wondering if it's something that uh, and apparently you said no, it's not something that you talk about because you came up with Green Day, who's in and Rancid, and that album, that Epitaph album, you guys broke records. Nobody had ever sold that many albums uh, on that debut album of yours on an independent label. If right. there's something that smashed the ceiling, that was it. I mean, that was like not, you didn't open the door, you kicked open a door for independence. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that was, I guess, the biggest yeah. independent selling album. Gosh, maybe we should be enemy. Start it. Start a Twitter. <laughs> I know. Start right. a Twitter thread. I'm gonna. I'm gonna write a letter when we're done here. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to Cleveland. I'm gonna chain myself to the front door. 
and I'm not leaving. Okay. Hunger strike chains. I'm done. Um, all right. I want to play something with you guys. It's real quick. It's real easy. You don't got to spin plates or anything like that. I want to do first job, first music, first car, first concert. So uh, Dexter, we'll start with you. First job. Uh, loading trucks at Montgomery Ward in an orange jumpsuit. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah. Noodles, first job. Uh, Paperboy. Me too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The only difference was I'm collecting papers in Buffalo and I can't even pull the little ticket because my oh, hands are frozen. Well, and I'm yeah. sure you're in sunny California just slinging them from your chopper. Oh, the rain in California was the fun time. Yeah, most That's of the time it was sunny and boring. Yeah, the, I, I loved the rain because, yeah, everything got wet. Yeah, that <laughs> Buffalo News, dude, I'm telling you, it was cold. Oh, I can't um, even imagine. What a nightmare. Okay, Noodles, first music. Do you remember? Is it is it a 45? Is it a cassette? What's your first piece of music? That's yours, first, not the, the first, one that you got yeah. from a big brother, big sister, mom, or dad. It was one of those KTEL compilations that I asked my parents to buy me for my birthday, and it had the Who on it. It had the monkeys, cream was on it. Uh was Zagger and Evans, uh, <laughs> uh shocking blue. Uh yeah, nice. it was a bunch of a bunch of different stuff. The Kinks, great. Yeah, the Kinks was great. And I'm thinking it might have been something that was advertised on TV. A little it was definitely. It was definitely it was, TV, yeah. right? I still have uh, it. Two records set. Yeah, it was awesome. I think that I got. There was this album called Goofy Gold, and it was all the goofball songs, but it was the uh, same thing. It was shown on TV, and we begged our parents for that. Right. Uh, it's like Dr. Demento kind of stuff? Yes, exactly nice, like that. Nice, nice. All right, Dexter, first music. Uh, I was about seven. It was a 45, and it was the Jackson 5. Uh, wow. It was it was not Want You Back, though. It was Dancing Machine, which uh, it's much hipper <laughs> Jackson 5, in my opinion. Way great stuff. Now, to fall into that, do you have older brothers and sisters that turn you onto it? Yeah, yeah. My older brother okay. got me into all the Kiss, Kiss Alive, and yeah. all that stuff, all that great stuff later. Dexter, first car. 1980 Chevy Chevette, which is the lamest car ever <laughs> produced. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, maybe. And maybe. Uh, so bad that I used to have stuff thrown at me on the freeway, and it was the inspiration for, uh, for Bad Habit. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, my friend delivered pizzas in one. That was their pizza deliveries. Oh, awesome. And he and he would always say, well, you know what they say, the vet makes them wet. I go, I think that for Corvette. <laughs> I don't think that, I, not I, this I vet, not my vet. Yeah. I don't, that saying wasn't created for the Chevette. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Noodles, first car. Uh, I was a 70s. I don't even know what, what year. 70s Toyota Corona Deluxe Mark IV. Uh, they made a, a car model, the Corona. Corona, Toyota Corona <laughs> Deluxe Mark IV. Yeah, it it was the biggest piece of crap ever. So the fan belts wouldn't wouldn't uh, <laughs> grab hold, so it would just squeal every time I turned a corner. Every time I started it up, just wake up the neighbors. All right, last one. First concert. This is always my favorite. Noodles, you're on. Gosh, uh, the first big one I remember going to was Rush and Thirty Eight Special at the Forum. Oh, really? that was like yeah. a big yeah big big uh big festival the big big like the first big concert right right all right dexter first concert i think i had gone to maybe a couple parties or small clubs but my first real concert mm -hmm. concert was the missing persons and bow wow 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 well where was that at irvine meadows about probably 1983 that's awesome that's awesome guys i'm such a fan i love this new song um, what can you tell us just quickly about the rest of the album? I mean, we kind of know what this sounds like. Um, any covers on this new album? Not, not Grieg. really. I mean, Grieg. we do, we do Hall of the Mountain King. Oh, well, that's true. Grieg. Yes. That's sort of a taking a piss <laughs> out of a classical song, but yeah. we're anxious for people to hear the rest of the record. I mean, we've done some okay. press and people are calling it classic offspring, which I think is great. That's kind of what we're going for. I, I think that the sound and it fits. And like I told my program director, uh, you know, I, you got to dance with the guys that brought you to the dance and offspring are such a huge reason of, you know, me and my job being an alternative, my whole career and, you know, coming up with you guys. Um, I, I was so excited when I heard it. I just knew that I heard something special and it's really working here in Houston. So I'll keep fighting for it guys. And I cannot wait to get you guys out on the road. And I know that you can't wait to get back on the road, but to see the offspring live is really something special. So I hope it happens sooner than later. 
Rod. Thank you very much. Great talking with yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much, Rod. Appreciate it. All right, it. guys, take care, man.